I'd like to invite Devin DiBernardo, one of our program managers, to the stage now to share a story, just one story, of just one family that we've been able to help this year. Our supervised visitation program, launched this past year, is the only free, safe, and legal way for some parents to spend time with their children when a court order prohibits contact. For many parents, access to their children means stability. Being able to see their child is the reason they are staying sober, applying for work, or seeking stable housing. While we've changed some details to protect confidentiality, I want to share a story with you tonight on behalf of one of our visit supervisors. Samuel is 13 years old, and up until last month, he hadn't seen his dad, Tom, for four years. Finally able to complete treatment and take the steps he needed to in order to see his kids, Tom was granted supervised visits with his son, Samuel, and his 10-year-old daughter, Becky. I first met Tom for intake. He admitted that he was nervous. What do you say to a child whose last memory of you was when you were at rock bottom? What do you say to a child when your ability to father was destroyed by addiction and violence? How do you rebuild trust? The day of the first visit, I went to greet Samuel and Becky to bring them to the visit room where Tom was waiting. Samuel's sister got out of her seat with impressive determination. Samuel looked up at me in that way that only teens can and told me he wasn't going. And so he stayed. Becky told Tom all about her life, her favorite subject in school, the goals she scored at her last soccer game, how much she detested vegetables. Tom listened attentively, and it was clear to see how much joy he felt in connecting with his daughter. That joy, though, was tempered by a deep sadness and disappointment in not being able to have this same experience with his son. For the next visit, I went to get Samuel and Becky, not expecting to see Samuel at all. But there he was, with his arms crossed. I sat with him for a moment and asked if he'd like to try just for 10 minutes and reassured him that he could leave the visit room at any time. He agreed. We went into the visit room where Tom was sitting at a round table. Becky went over with games she had pulled from the toy shelf ready to play. Samuel sat on the couch as far from his dad as he could. The distance between them, both physically and emotionally, was palpable. Tom so genuinely wanted to connect with his son and he asked Samuel how he was doing. He was met with a soft, okay, and no eye contact. Tom filled the space in the room, telling Samuel about his job and how he had an apartment of his own. Samuel continued to keep his eyes glued to the floor. Tom and Becky began working on a puzzle. Tom kept his posture open to Samuel and patiently tried to include him in their conversation. Samuel mumbled short answers to his questions. However, he started to shuffle along the couch, inching closer to his father. I knew that Samuel enjoyed drawing. I offered that we had an art supply cupboard. He went over and picked out a notepad, which he brought over to the table where his father and sister were playing. He cautiously sat down and began to draw. 
They didn't talk much, but they didn't need to. Samuel stayed for the entire visit. And as they left the visit room, Tom hesitatingly asked, see you next time? Samuel replied, yeah. I walked the kids back to their mom. She was shocked that Samuel had stayed the entire visit. She assured me that though she has feared for her own safety and well-being around Tom, and that she has no interest in seeing him again, that she does want her kids to feel connected to him as their father. Our program is honored to continue to lay the foundation for healthy relationships within this family. This new service exemplifies the WDRC's evolution, seeing community need and coming together to address it. We can't do it alone though. We need your help to build peace in the lives of Whatcom County families. So Tom, Becky, and Samuel, and the many other families like them can stay connected.